Welcome back to Boomi Essentials. The next topic that we want to talk about is document flow. Now Dell Boomi actually supports five raw document types. We have XML, we have JSON, flat file, database, and EDI. Documents are also presented in four different formats. We have records for flat file and database types. We have transactions for XML and EDI. We have file instances for communication between systems not requiring a structure analysis. Things like email attachments and exporting to disk. And then finally, we have empty for simple triggering of subsequent shapes within a process. In order to have a better understanding about how the documents flow through our process, let's take a look at a simple example. Documents often represent individual files to read into the process. However, it's important to understand a single document may contain multiple records. If this is the case, it's useful to use the split action of the data process shape to split a document each containing a single record for processing. This would be very useful if you have a large daily batch file of purchase orders that could be split by order number into multiple documents, so each purchase order would be processed and tracked independently. For our current example though, let's assume that we've read in multiple documents at the start, each representing a single record for an individual's account information. Upon execution of the process, these documents are retrieved and sent down the process flow path. The documents flow together as a group, but they are independent. They encounter a map shape which is used to transform documents from one document type to another. Here we are converting the documents from XML to flat file, or known as CSV. We will learn more about the map shape shortly. Next, our documents have the data process shape applied to them. In this example, the four documents will be combined into a single document. Because of the data process shape, the four account documents, each with a single record, are now in a single batched document, consisting of four records. The set property shape will now add document properties. In this case, the document is given a specific name before being written to disk. We'll learn more about the set property shape soon. Finally, the document is then sent to our disk directory. At this point, the documents will actually leave the process and be saved onto the disk directory itself, which means those documents cannot be found anywhere after that disk shape. This will be helpful to know because our process is much like the process shown here. I do have another process I would like to look at with you, so let's take a look at one more example about how documents can flow through a process. Now, documents typically flow together as a group by default but there are some conditional shapes that may send documents down different paths. For example, a decision shape can be used to compare two values and send a document down either the true or false path. From the example here, we can see that due to the decision shape, two documents are sent down the true path and two are sent down the false path. The paths are not executed in parallel. Instead, they are sequential so documents will complete the true path before any documents flow down the false path. As we work through our process, we will talk more about the document flow. This is the end of the document flow discussion, as well as the document flow video.